Meg gets home from work. Her white button-up shirt is a little tight, a little too stretchy on her, making her sweat in weird places. She untucks part of it. Hair's a bit messy. Skin's a little too greasy for her liking. She's kind of got a watered up bouquet of flowers in one hand. Kind of got her coat over only over one arm. Her tie's a mess. She comes in, also holding a briefcase, kind of tries to close the door real quick, but it slams in her briefcase and swings slightly open. She shuffles into the room, her slacks making a weird, stretchy, swishy sound that's uncomfortable to the ear as, as uncomfortable to the ear as it is to her skin. And she saunters into the room. Vic- Vicky, or Victoria, is sitting in front of the laptop that they have in the desk in their dining room or living room area. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. She's there all the time working. Meg is busy thinking about what a horrible day she's had, about how gross her skin feels and how she just needs to go shower right now and get off these horrendous black shiny shoes and slacks and into her comfy cat pajamas. In her rush, she drops her coat and briefcase on the floor, and she just slams the flowers down onto the coffee table and drops her briefcase on top of them, groaning out <laughs> like a angry, no, like a happy cat. Like an angry cat. Her groan sounds like an angry cat. She takes two steps towards Vicky and decides it's not worth it to try to start a conversation right now. She just goes, ugh, what a day I've had. She moves instinctively towards the counter where there's a dirty coffee mug from this morning, her head thinking coffee that makes everything better. She realizes a second too late, it's dirty, it's gross, she shouldn't drink out of that. Not to mention, there's tons of dirty dishes on the counter. She really should wash them or something. I don't that she can do that right now. And then she glances around the kitchen and realizes there are way more dirty dishes than usual. In fact, there's also more cobwebs than she's noticed have been around lately. She just hates grime. She hates the flickering fluorescent light that buzzes weirdly and that little beetle that's always humming up above there trying to get into the light as if that was some kind of haven. Kind of grossed out, feeling sick at her stomach. She turns towards the room and goes, I'm sure you didn't have time to do the dishes today, but it really bothers me when they're just messy like that. Okay? And into the bedroom. And closes the bedroom door behind her. What she doesn't stop to notice is that Vicky's face is stained with mascara. And wet mascara because her eyes are wet too. And they overflowed a little bit. Not only that, they're pretty red. And Vicky's fingers are scraped, and the skin around her nails is peeling from how much she's been picking on them all day. On the computer screen is a website that she's been searching. Help, I'm depressed. Suicide Help Prevention Hotline number. Frozen. She's been frozen ever since Meg walked in. Frozen, palms cold, hair on her arms standing on end, afraid that Meg would see her frozen and see what was on the computer because more than anything in this life, she wants to love Meg. And That's all she knows, besides the fact that her head is like burnt spaghetti that's been left in the boiling pot and never, ever taken out. She doesn't move or reach out to Meg for a few seconds. Then she turns her head two clicks to the right to see a bouquet of flowers, presumably for her, crushed under Meg's suitcase, on Meg's briefcase. And in that second, she knows 
What's wrong? She sees in those smooshed flowers under that briefcase, as if it was a metaphor from God, exactly what's wrong with her and her wife. And that's the end of my story. That's the way that I tell stories, that's the way that I write, although sometimes I'm in front of a keyboard and I try to get them out. More than often I more often than not I try to get them out in the form of fandoms so that people will be interested already because they like the fandom and I like the fandom. Um or try to use characters that have already built a world around or already published books about. But I get these ideas in my head, these moments that I love to explore. Med and Meg and Vicky, strangely enough, although I hadn't given them names before, are characters that I've been thinking on and thinking about what their life would be like for actually a long time now. And it's usually what happens. Whenever these scenes come into my head and I sort of free verse them or free write them as I did just now, Usually that came from a long time of mulling over and thinking about these characters, like once thinking of a situation, once thinking how that would look, how that character would be, and just sort of thinking of them in my head occasionally because they bring me some sort of comfort or they're an exploration of some kind of ideal, and um, sort of going through, thinking through it in your head around over and over about how that would work, almost like when you get stuck on a song and you're just thinking of the song over and over, sort of figuring it out and what it is and all that think about characters and situations, some kind of storyline, and in this situation, that would be that. I hope you enjoyed watching my free verse, my improvised short story, and I hope that, you know, you'll enjoy watching my other videos. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below, um, I guess, write in the comments whatever you want to. and. Um, and if you'd like to see more of me, an artsy nerd stumbling through life, art, and fandoms, then hit subscribe and, you know, click on that bell down there. Ring the bell, is what I'm going to say from now on. Sort of hit the bell. Why would, why would you hit it? Would you just tap the bell? Just, just ring the bell if you'd like to be notified absolutely when I make new videos. And until next time, and until I see you again, always remember that we are epic heroes day and every day of our lives. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Peace out.